Hey guys, in this video today I want to show you and talk a little bit about absolute and relative referencing in Excel. It is literally the foundation of how your formulas interact when they are copied and pasted from cell to cell in your workbook. So in order to show you how this works, I'm going to show you first how relative referencing works and then we'll look at some absolute referencing uh, some absolute referencing examples using the same table as well. So we have an inventory table here and we want to calculate the available on hand. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to use the equal sign and then we're going to select cell D5 minus my current demand, which is going to give me how many pieces I currently have available on hand after our demand. So that gives me a value of 12 and you'll see that I am referencing cell D5 and then I'm also referencing cell F5. So if we were to move down and copy this formula down one cell, what we would expect is because we're only moving it down one row, we're gonna see a change in our referencing from row five for both of the values to row six. So that means we'll run into D6 and F6. And you'll see that that is exactly the case because we only removed one row down and the six um, and the number in our cell patterns or our cell referencing, of course, reflect the row and the letters and characters obviously reflect our columns. So that is kind of how that works. So if we now double click the fill handle, it's going to, because each time I move down one cell, it's going to literally move the referencing down one row. So we went from six to seven, and then we'll go in from D seven to D eight, and then from D eight to D nine, and you'll see that that's how that works. So that's how relative referencing works. So that I'll show you really quickly, just to give you an idea. If I were to copy that formula and I put this way over here, and I put that formula in there, you'll see that it's giving me a value of three. So let's see what happened. So if I hit F2, it's going to show me F5 uh, minus H5. Now the reason for this is we went two cells over, which is two columns over. So that brought us from cell D5, 1, 2, to F5. And you'll see that that's the case here. And then from our current demand, we went over two cells. So that's from cell F5 to 1, 2, which is H5, which has no value. So now that means that we're just using three minus blank, which of course gives us $3. So that gives you an idea how that relative referencing is working. It literally just follows you by the number of cells that you move either up or down, left or right, uh, either rows or columns. So that if you are using relative referencing, the formula is gonna follow the exact number of cells that you move. Now looking at holding cost, what I wanna do here is I wanna multiply my value of on-hand inventory times my unit cost, and that'll give me my total valuation, and then multiply it by the percentage for inventory holding. So if I type in equals and I hit 15, which is D5 times E5, I'm gonna put that in brackets, I forgot to do that, so I'll just go back here quickly, close that bracket, and then we're going to multiply that by the value that is currently showing in G2, which is our inventory hold rate, and that will give us our total holding cost. So in this case, it's $27.90. Now what would happen if we were to fill that rate down using the fill handle? If I double click on that, you'll see that this is definitely not right. So what is happening is if I hit, uh, let's go down a couple, for example, if I hit F2, on this cell, you'll see that it's now referencing G4 instead of referencing G2, which I wanted to continue to reference. So we left it as a relative reference, and of course it followed that relative reference. So what we want to do in this is we want to make sure that we make it an absolute reference. So let's go back to H5. Let's double click on that. And to make this an absolute reference, we're just going to hit F4. And you'll see that dollar sign went in front of the column reference as well as the dollar sign went in front of the row reference. If we continue to hit F4, we can make it so that there's an absolute reference for the column, meaning if we were to move uh, over a column, that would remain unaffected. It would still reference uh, the same column. And then if we used, if 
if I hit F4 again, and we had uh, a dollar sign in front of the row reference, that would mean that if we move down any number of rows, it would still reference the second row. So we want it though to reference the same exact cell, which means we want an absolute reference for both the column and the row. So there you have it. So let's now hit enter. So now you see that we have 2790. We have the same result as we did prior. Uh, but as we copy this down now, that reference is going to remain the same. So now you see that it is still referencing G2. And we are, because our relative reference moving down one row for our on hand quantity times our unit cost, it is doing what exactly what we want it to do. And you'll see that that kind of moved all the way down. I'll move it all the way down to this and we'll look at this. And you will see again that it is still referencing G2 down below, and that is our inventory hold rate. So that is basically how absolute and relative referencing works. Again, if you want to, uh, if you want to reference a, if you want to use referencing for uh, rows or for columns only, doing absolute referencing, I should say, then of course you just put a dollar sign in front of uh, either of those. So I hope you have a good understanding of what we're doing here and how this works. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for joining me today and we will see you next time.